Hello cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first visit to our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. Gorilla shoppers are strong. They resist impulse shopping. We do not give in to temptation. Do you know Australians waste thousands of dollars a year on spontaneous, impulsive, unplanned purchases. The, I see it, I want it, I'm going to have it even if I can't afford it type impulse. The sad thing is, if you were to ask them if they were impulse shoppers, they would probably deny it. Yes, they are in a state of shopping denial. Shopping is a chore not a hobby, not a recreational activity, folks. So here are some tips that will help you resist resist <laughs> impulse buying and keep more of your money in your bank account. Number one is really easy. Just say no. Little two-letter word with a lot of power. No. It's usually the first real word babies learn, isn't it? So you know what? If a baby can say it, so can you. The marketing experts depend on our inability to say no. They place the most expensive, most attractive items at eye level in the most eye-catching pretty displays. The real bargains, as gorilla shoppers know, are on the top and the bottom shelf. So say no to expensive eye-level buys and look high, look low for the real bargains. Tip number two, take time to smell the roses. Just don't buy them. As soon as you walk in the door of the supermarket, you are surrounded by the fresh flower display, um, that smells so nice, you're surrounded by the scent of freshly baked bread that wafts across the store, it torments you and tempts you to wander over to the bakery to see what's good. Now, you have to cross through these sections to get into the supermarket, but you don't need to stop. If you stop, you're sunk. By all means, sniff as you push your trolley through these money traps. Just don't buy. Tip number three, an oldie but a goodie. Don't shop hungry. It's true. If you are hungry when you shop, you are far more likely to end up with around, oh, I think the stats say something like $35 worth of extra foodstuffs that you don't want, that you don't really need, that aren't on your list in your trolley just because you're hungry. So have a sandwich and a cuppa before you leave home. Keep your $35 in your wallet. Tip number four, become a loan shopper. I know it's difficult. It can be a bit, bit tricky to organise the time because I once had three children under four, but if you possibly can, leave the little ones at home when you shop. For a start, you'll be so quick. You'll be in and out and you'll be more relaxed. You won't be distracted by lots of questions and making sure that little fingers aren't tossing things into the trolley to help you. And you won't have to deal with the, you know, end of checkout, deliberately placed kid size temptations that can often cause a lot of grief. Tip number five, make a list. Be like Santa Claus, check it twice and then stick to it. It is just common sense. You've made your shopping list, you've checked it at home and it is what you need. It has everything on it that you need so you know what to buy. There is no excuse for not sticking to it. Do not deviate from that list. Research 
I love research because it shows us so much that we really already know. But research shows that shoppers who use a written shopping list consistently spend less over the year. They don't give in to the impulse buys. They stick to their list and their grocery budget. Who would have thought that, you know, a sheet of paper could have such an impact, such a huge influence? Tip number six, new, improved. Really? Is it the product or the packaging? The signs like new and improved and, and um, pretty new packaging, they're deliberate attempts to weaken your defences. They're designed to catch your eye, to make you want whatever it is. So before you buy, check the labels. Often, not much, if anything, has changed in terms of the product. It's just the packaging and the price that have had a facelift. It could even be a case of shrinkflation. Evaluate every item you buy when it says new, improved, super, whatever, to make sure it actually is a good buy and just ignore all that marketing hype because that's all it is, words designed to part you from your money. Tip number seven, I said it earlier, shopping is not a hobby. It is not a recreational experience. I like shopping, but it's not my hobby and it shouldn't be yours. Shopping centres are not entertainment precincts, regardless of how they advertise themselves. Shopping is a chore to be done. So make it a habit to go to the shops no more than once a week. Take your list, get everything on your list. If you get home and find that you've missed something, put it on the list for next week so you won't miss it. Overexposure to supermarkets and department stores and um, marketplaces and things makes you so much more vulnerable to the marketing ploys designed to get you to part with your cash. So stay away from them. Tip number eight, don't fight the crowds. I hate shopping in crowds. So work out the least busy time at your supermarket and do your shopping then. It's more relaxing for a start. And you won't be battling crowds in the aisles, crowds at the checkout, crowds in the car park, trolleys coming the other way. You'll be able to go in get what's on your list, get out and get home. It will be a breeze and you'll be done and dusted, home enjoying a cuppa before you know it. Now, if it means you get up at 6am, do it. It's only once a week or once a fortnight or once a month. If it means you shop at 10pm, do it. Again, it's only once a week or a fortnight or a month, however often you shop. And we don't shop more often than once a week. It's worth the effort of breaking your shopping day habit to save money. Tip number nine, cash only. Leave your credit and debit cards at home. Take your grocery money in cash. There's nothing quite like the fear of not having enough money at the checkout to help you stick to your grocery list and your grocery budget. There's nothing as embarrassing as finding yourself without enough money to pay for what, what you need and having to put something back. So switch to cash. Stick to your list. How do I say this diplomatically? Uh, okay, even with that thing that's going around creating havoc, Cash is still king. I know stores are saying that they don't want cash, but they will have to accept it. If that's all you have, that's what they will take. So use it. And tip number 10, shop the lost leaders and only the lost leaders. Now, lost leaders are designed to draw you into the store to get the low, low price. And then you're tempted by the regular price, sometimes even inflated price accessory items surrounding it 
So be strong. Go in, go to the end of the aisle, pick up your lost leader if it's on your list and get out. Don't buy another thing. Be strong. Just because it's the biscuits are next to the coffee doesn't mean you need biscuits. Just get the coffee. Just pick up your lost leaders. Now, you know, the stores might complain and say they're losing money. Well, that's the risk they take, isn't it, for putting on such a good sale. I can guarantee it's not them that's losing money. You are stronger, you are smarter than those marketing geniuses. You are a cheapskates gorilla shopper and you want to save big. So follow these 10 tips to avoid impulse shopping and keep more money in your bank account. Before I go, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already a subscriber to our channel, click that subscribe button below me and then click the bell and select how often you'd like to be notified when we post a video, upload a new video. If you'd like to, um, if you have a question is what I'm trying to get out. If you have a question, please feel free to leave it in the comments below or leave a comment. I read them all and I do my best to respond or answer to each one, especially the questions. And lastly, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It helps YouTube, but more importantly, it helps our channel to be more easily found. And the easier it is for people to find us, the easier it is to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, but it can still be done, even in today's crazy world. Happy cheapskating, everyone. <laughs>